Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to pay tribute to Fred Ward by reviewing Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. So, gotta say, uh, I thoroughly enjoy the Chun Remo Williams interactions in this movie. Even though we turn around and we just have goofy villains in this film, like this movie kind of gives me like the Six Million Dollar Man vibes and is to give me the uh, uh, the James Bond kind of vibes with the, the stone guy who is to have the, the diamond in his tooth. And I'm like, man, is that so weird? But we have it where we have Remo who is to have to be reinvented uh, waking up in this hospital and it's to have a new name, new identity, new face, and all of this stuff. And then is to have to go on and get trained by Chun to dodge bullets and <clears throat> be able at some point to uh, like be able to move quicker, uh, to be able to go on and lift his feet from off the ground at some points to almost float. And so like that practice, even within this film is to be like shown. And so, yeah, like there's some interesting ideas that they do here. There's some fun things that they try to approach. And so we also have Chun with some funny sayings within this movie going on and talking about like fast food and there's a reason why they call it fast food because the, it's the quickest way to the grave. And so we also have Chun who's watching soap operas. <laughs> and so like, uh, especially at the tail end, we have this like funny little uh, talk between Chun and Remo. And uh, like, that's how they kind of uh, finish off the film. So I enjoyed this movie. There's some interesting things in it. And uh, so, yeah, like I would I would say that this is um, this is an OK film. Uh, if it weren't for the goofy villain things like this would really just be like better than this. But like I would just say that it's an OK film. Um, there's some fun parts. I enjoy this movie. Some people may uh, hate this movie. Some people may love the film. Some people may think it's too goofy and whatever. Um, but yeah, so with that said, I think uh, teeing it up, what exactly is this film about? Well, come to find out Remo is to not be Remo uh, in the very beginning of this movie. And eventually his name is to be changed uh, because, of course, the previous man that Remo was was to be killed and they had a fake death uh for who remo was so we have it to where remo's character was to go on and try to do this arrest uh with these two men trying to attack this one other guy and come to find out Remo was to realize that all of these guys are wanting to attack Remo. And now he has to defend himself. And he ends up uh, getting into an accident during this whole event. Having him wake up in this hospital with a different name, a, a clean shaven face. And is to realize that a guy named Con uh, McCleary is to want him to work for the government. Going on and doing some assassination missions because of course Remo uh, is ex-military. So Remo is decided to go on and like, oh, okay, like I'll do whatever you guys need me to do because uh, basically I'm a ghost anyways because you'll just uh, put me right back into my coffin if I disagree. So, okay, sure. So... Remo then goes on and uh, is to be trained by Chun, where, like, Chun is to go on and just consistently, like, uh, 
astonished and amazed by his bullet dodging abilities or just the fact that he is to go on and hit Remo to the point of him just having these kind of like these moments of just like him having a heart attack it seems and then Chun having to adjust Remo's body to then go on and have him be set back to normal and so for this film we have Remo like mostly going through all these training things and then eventually like we start to like have these weird clips showcasing uh, more about this villain and how much of a threat he is and uh we find out about this heart probe and this ar-60 gun which i think they should have mostly built that for this whole film is just like building a malfunctioning gun would have been like the best story for this film and they didn't have to go with the harp probe thing i just think that that's weird but maybe like to have just had this gun maybe that's like well that's not enough uh like to make uh this villain a wealthy guy who is to have the control of the military but still uh look at tony stark uh look at that so anyways like so this movie has a James Bond, $6 million man kind of approach to it. And eventually we'll, uh, like there isn't very focus on the villain or villain side of things. Um, but either way, there's also some fun things they do with dogs in this film. <laughs> Remo is going on like, yeah, dogs, <laughs> what are you going to do now? And then all of a sudden... <laughs> The dogs are like, yeah, we're going to come after you. And Remo's like, oh, crap. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's just go into spoilers. Hopefully I'm going to remember all of this stuff because uh, there's a lot to break down in this film. Uh, a lot of, like, very specific stuff. Uh, like, we have the Sinaju, uh, Sinaju uh, martial arts uh, thing that to teach Remo in this movie and uh the fact that Chun had come from Korea uh just to teach Remo how to do all this and so on and so forth and having uh Chun telling uh Khan that it would take like uh 15 to 14 years uh to train Remo <laughs> so yeah so Let's go into that double five time territory. Let's just go into spoilers about this movie. Uh, let's go into spoil time, spoil time. It's about the time I get to spoil this movie. So, like I said, uh, I'm going to just call Remo Williams, Remo Williams throughout this movie. Even though in the beginning of this, he has a different name. So, we have this officer. Uh, <laughs> who uh, is to eventually become Remo Williams. And so this police officer is to uh, be in his squad car, and it seems over the radio, uh, we have dispatch that wants to uh, get a hold of this police officer and mention, like, well, hey, uh, like this certain car, uh, like can you like respond and that uh i guess this guy had lost a bet for uh, a knicks game and that the other officer would be glad to take his money anytime that the knicks are playing so this officer is tempted to get onto the walkie uh or get onto the the radio and all of a sudden, he's seeing one man running. He's like, okay, what is that about? And then he is to follow to see two other men running behind him. The That man. And so we have the police officer that's like, oh, okay, like I'm just going to drive my way to see what this is about. So we have one man being beat up by two other men. And that's when the police officer is to 
put on his lights and sirens and is to scare these guys. And so this police officer gets out of his vehicle and is to think that he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go on and help this one guy out going up against these two other men to possibly even up the odds. But instead, we have the guy who's getting beating, beaten up is beating up this police officer, and now it's a three-on-one situation. So we have the police officer getting some pretty good looks in and is crushing people's hands and clocking people and so we go on and we have this officer that's exhausted and he's to kind of go on and tell these guys after they've gone and been well beaten up just like hey like just uh like don't move don't do anything and so the officer goes back into his car and is to take this drink, this last sip of his cup. And while that's going on, we all of a sudden have Con McCleary, who is in this kind of very beat up, like it looks like an armored car. That's all very graffitied and, and all kinds of things and is smashing into this officer's car pushing him over this edge uh, of this uh, kind of pier to go into this water and also when looking at the place that these three men are at this spot very much reminds me of like spider-man 2 the hideout that was uh, Dr. Octavius's in Spider-Man 2. I don't know if it's if that place is the exact same place or whichever. Um, but man, if it was, like, I wouldn't be surprised. But so, because it looks very, like, similar, the building and, and whatever. But so, Remo uh, is to wake up in this hospital as Remo, and he is to have been... I guess possibly in a coma and we have this nurse who's saying yeah I just shaved you uh like hence why I'm here and so Remo is woken up mid-shave and all of a sudden Con McCleary is there and saying like well hey like yeah we've renamed you every as Remo Williams and uh we've gone on and like uh you are now to be dead. You've been buried uh, as your previous self. So Remo's kind of confused, like, well, hey, like, what's going on here? And Khan is to explain that Remo is going to be working for the government, that uh, this guy is to have everything that these guys are to want more, being that he's an ex-military that he uh, is, has so much training, and so, like, he's the perfect candidate. So, we have it where, like, Remo is not really sold uh, quite that easily yet. And so, when Khan leaves, Remo is to go on into this ambulance and is to drive off, and Khan is a sneak into the back of this ambulance and is to tell Remo like hey take a left here so Remo is to follow Con uh, McCleary to this national bank which doesn't really look like a national bank inside of it at all because really what it actually looks like is a bunch of servers in some room and then they go off to meet with Harold Smith, uh, this guy who I guess would have possibly a supercomputer or a artificial life form of sorts that, uh, or an AI of sorts that is to give Harold a bunch of information about a number of people. But like, I would just say it's like, okay, this guy just has like a computer. Like, <laughs> okay, Oakley Doakley. So. Harold Smith is to go on and tell Remo here that he wants him to work with them 
or they're going to just put him right back into that coffin. And so Remo's like, well, okay, like, uh, you've got me. Like, what, what do you need me to do? Because uh, they want to go on and use this guy as some kind of assassin or to just kind of take down the bad guys. And so uh, they just want Remo to clean up the... Uh, the dirtiness of a computer, basically, to to clean out uh, the fact that certain evil people are still living. And Remo's like, oh, okay, that's that seems simple enough. So we go on and we have McClary that takes Remo to this location, and McClary is telling Remo that he normally puts his people through the deep end right away. And so McCleary is wanting Remo to go into this building to take a man out. And Remo's like, okay, this seems like a reasonable job. Like I'll go in there. And so McCleary is telling him, it's like, well, hey, like don't take this man lightly. be fast, like try to go on and like take this guy out as quickly as possible. And Remo's like, okay, all right. So, Remo is to start to sneak into this building and is to see a uh, a Korean man just kind of sitting next to this, like, uh, this table. And so Remo is to think nothing of him and is to decide to uh, continue to walk up these flights of stairs to open this door. And so... Remo is talking to this Korean man and saying, like, well, how do you get this door open? Because, like, I want to figure out a way out of here. And this man is saying, like, well, just go the way of which that you came. That's how to get out of here. And so Remo's like, no, I don't think you get it. Like, I'm here to go on and eliminate your boss. And so this man is saying, like, well, I'm the only one here. I'm alone. And so Remo's like, oh, so I must be after you then. So come to find out this guy is Chun, the guy that will be training Remo. And so Chun is to go on and stand up. And Remo is to start to shoot Chun and so Shun is to be so quick that he, of course, is to dodge all these bullets. He's to kind of like go on and, and angle in a way where he where uh, Remo continues to miss all these bullets to where Chun is to kind of uh, twist uh, Remo's hand and is to take the uh, the bullet cartridge out and then is to take all the bullets out and then is to put the uh, the gun cartridge of bullets uh, that are no longer existing in there back into the gun. And so then Remo is trying to go on and like charge like a bull to take down Chun. And every time he does this, Chun just dodges out of the way as if he is some uh, like, bull uh bullfighter who is to dodge out of the way and use this kind of red uh red uh blanket of sorts or sheet of sorts to dodge uh what which of course is remo even when remo is to go on and grab certain items and hope that he can attack chun yeah none of this even works so Remo is to like consistently get cast out by just going on and trying to like attack Chun and nothing is working. And so finally we have McCleary that is to go and see Chun and say like, well, hey, like, like how, how do you feel about him? How do you feel about Remo? And Chun is to go on and, and consistently have these like weird bizarre sayings like uh 
Remo is to be uh, like he moves like a, a pregnant yak or like he is to like be this kind of like this kind of weird animal of sorts that is to be like slow and clumsy and this and that. And so, but Chun is to also look in Remo's eyes and just say like, well, like there's something there that I think, uh, will give me some like potential or hope uh for this man so i think i will take him on i think i will teach him so we go on we have remo who is just feel like insulted here it's like hey like i didn't know that this is like to be what this is and so Remo is to go on and have McCleary take Remo to Chun's place, real place, uh, to be trained. And so Remo is to go on and be at Chun's place. And so the first thing that Chun is to teach Remo is how to breathe. And so Remo's like, wait a minute, like, are you gonna, like, teach me some garbage where it's gonna take me, like, a year and my foot is gonna be able to, like, break a brick? Or my, my, my big toe is gonna be able to, uh, break a brick? Is that, is that what we're, tra we're training here? And Chun is to go on and hit, uh, Remo to where he's just kind of, like, having these, these moments of just this uncontrolled, uh, like heart attack like feeling and then Chun is to snap this guy's hand and bring him back and then when Remo is to continue to talk or insult Chun Chun goes on and attacks Remo again and then kind of adjusts his ear uh, and pop his ear uh, for Remo to get back to where he is because Remo is to just talk way too often and Chun doesn't like that. Um, so, or like Remo just has a lot of quips and Chun doesn't like that whatsoever. It's like, dude, I can just, I can hurt you right now. I can kill you right now uh, without even really thinking about it. So, Remo is to go on and breathe, just <laughs> like Chun wants, and like it's just so goofy. So then Chun is to turn around, and like Remo is to really never eat to the point where Remo is to finally ask Chun, it's like, well, hey, when are we going to get a meal? Like, when are we going to get supper? And, like, I guess really Chun is to try to detox uh, Remo from all the stuff that he's ever eaten. And so I guess fasting for Remo uh, will be a possibly be a way for him to be lighter on his feet or to possibly... Uh, and I mean by fasting, by like Remo just eating nothing uh, or drinking anything will eventually like uh, have him possibly fight harder or uh, eventually want to do everything that Chun says so that we Remo will be able to get some kind of uh, some kind of food, some kind of nourishment to where Chun is probably to mainly offer Remo just rice. And hey, maybe I might give you some butter at some or or some honey at some point. And Remo's like going on to the grocery store and just hiding certain cans of food in the top counter because he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna freaking I'm gonna eat because uh, I don't think I'm I think I'm gonna starve to death if I eat if I'm with this guy, and he's not gonna be able to give me the food that I need. So, but Chun and Remo are to go on to the top of this building and Chun at this uh kind of side of this building where there's kind of this little uh this little time where Chun can kind of run um through this little like a uh, tip 
of this building, so to speak. Remo is to go on and try to copy what Chun is doing by running through this little, uh, this little, I want to say it's like, uh, incline of sorts, so Remo is to try to do this, and Chun is like, well, that was good, like, you did this, but, like, next time, do it faster, so... Remo just gets used to going and running around this building uh, without thinking about the height of it all. And so eventually Remo figures that out. And so they have to go on and do other things after that. So Chun is to have this, uh, like this, like Tilt-A-Whirl, like kind of... Uh, if anybody was to go on and see Fantastic Four 2 Rise of the Silver Surfer, the thing that the thing has to go on and, like, hold, uh, the, uh, like, I always have, the, like, the weird, goofy amusement park, uh, rides confused always. We had the, the one ride where you go and you just kind of, uh, are kind of spinning around and you're in these little, uh, these little, uh, these little, uh, shacks or whatever, where you're just kind of watching, uh, the world go up and down, as you can see, like, the whole view of everything. So, Remo is hanging on to one of those little, uh, those little rooms, and he's to have to, like, dangle upside down, and so Chun is wanting Remo to climb all the way to the top of this thing and then is to figure out a way to climb down from this uh this thing to then meet chun at the bottom before chun gets down there and so by the time that chun gets down there so is remo and they go off and it seems that remo is to be able to somehow face his fear of heights, but still, like, there's a building block to that. So, we also have Major Rainer Fleming, who is to talk to her supervisor, who is General Scott Watson, and is to be at Fort Bragg and see that there is an AR-60 gun that is malfunctioning and had killed one of the soldiers, and one of the sol one of the other soldiers is to complain about how this gun does not work. The major is to tell the general about this report that she's to have about this gun not working. And we have George Grove, who is to be the villain of this story that is trying to have that report never see the light of day. So because we have, of course, Harold Smith, who's to have all these kind of computer things about uh, George Grove having three witnesses uh, that are to have gone missing. And uh, George Grove is to have this, this harp uh, probe that was to have taken millions of dollars to make and is a part of the whole, like, Reagan, Star Wars, uh, like, space program. And so... And that this is building up to be like the villain of this story. So we have it where George Grove is to now have Major Rainer Fleming have Stone be following her and taking pictures of her. To where all of a sudden we have Major Rainer Fleming who is to eventually go on and meet with her uh, with her superiors and have at some point Remo who is going on and is to of course uh, like be right in the same uh, building of which that Fleming is and is eventually to go on and and uh, just kind of flirt with her like oh nice buttons <laughs> so 
We have it where Remo and Fleming are to leave this building at the same time after speaking to certain people. We have Stone who is taking these secret pictures of uh, Fleming and uh, McCleary and Remo. So all of a sudden Stone is to take these pictures to Grove and is going to try to use this against Fleming to say that she's working with people. She's conspirizing or conspiracy -ing with people uh, to go against the government uh, to possibly get uh, Fleming possibly arrested somehow. So again, like these reports will be buried. So... And Fleming seems to be like a uh, a person that is to try too hard. And uh, General Scott Watson is telling uh, Fleming, it's like, well, hey, like, just because you're a girl doesn't mean that you have to, like, do more work than anybody. Uh, and Fleming is like, well, like, if you're going to completely forget that I'm a woman, I'm going to completely forget that you're a man. <laughs> what a joke. So... So we go on and we have eventually Remo who is to re-meet up with Harold Smith and they go on and they're possibly thinking about what is to happen if uh, this whole thing, this whole... Uh, program is to be discovered by anybody like what would they do and harold smith is to say it's like well like we have this procedure called the cure where normally if anyone is to go on and be found out we would just all kill one another and so harold smith is to go on and have this pill who is to give him a heart attack uh, it seems that McCleary is to go on and have this uh, way of uh, going on and possibly shooting himself, doing himself in, and Remy's cure is Chun, that Chun is hired to at some point kill Remo if there ever is to be a point where his life is in jeopardy. So... Because they're thinking that it's like, well, hey, it's either going to be this villain or it's going to be us. So we have to decide at some point whether uh, if we are to ever have uh, a point where we are to be taken and tortured and whatever, we have to do ourselves in somehow or another. And that eventually becomes into the later part of the story where... We have McCleary and we have Williams who are going to the Grove facility to try to get information. McCleary is to go on and get some, uh, like, either projector or some kind of recording of some sort. Uh, and while McCleary is doing that, Remo is going on and sneaking through this facility to find himself three dogs that are chasing after him. So... Remo is to go throughout this building to avoid these dogs and realize, like, oh, like, these dogs aren't that smart. And then we come on to find out that these dogs are very smart to the point of them figuring out some way. Uh, even when Remo is to uh, climb up to a higher part of this uh, kind of hangar that he's in. Like, these dogs will find a way to get to him. And so he has to continue to climb an even higher spot to just be like, okay, well, you can't get me up here. And then all of a sudden they'll be on, like, the ceiling uh, or they'll be on, like, the, the, the toppest part of this just kind of barking at him. And then he's like, oh, my God. So Remo is to start running around hoping that there's a way that this dog that these dogs will eventually not be able to get to him and Remo's like you doing this tightrope thing and 
is to think like, oh, well, these dogs aren't going to get to this type rope, this, this, uh, this, uh, this rope. They're not going to be able to just dangle through that. And we end up seeing the dogs that are trying that also, and they're doing a supposedly pretty good job at it. So, and I'm for, I know I'm forgetting about the whole Statue of Liberty thing, but I'll get to that in a second. So, Remo is to finally see the actual harp probe, but considering that this harp probe is a fake, the thing just blows up so that way the evidence of this won't get out anywhere. And so Remo is to run off to meet with McCleary and McCleary is asking Remo, it's like, well, hey, like, where is your evidence? And Williams is like, well, I blew it as we see this explosion that goes off in the background. So Remo and uh, McCleary are running off because McCleary had gone on and broke into this high voltage fence by using these bolt cutters or this these little uh, pliers. And so now that they aren't to go right back to that same fence, uh, McCleary is telling Remo to use this bulldozer to topple over this fence for them to try to run off. But McCleary ends up getting shot, which is to leave... McCleary to tell Remo to just run off with these with this recording so as also McCleary had to go on and distract these dogs by giving him his, his fake arm the way of which that he was to go on and be able to touch this high voltage fence without uh, getting an electrical shock so now back to the Statue of Liberty. So Remo and Chun are to go to the Statue of Liberty and go to the part where you can kind of see out through this kind of viewing thing of the like the crown, of the Statue of Liberty. And so Chun is telling Remo that they're going to stay here until Remo can work with his uh, with his height problem. And then Chun is going to force Remo to go out on the highest part of this Statue of Liberty. Because the Statue of Liberty, I guess, is getting, like, uh, like rebuilt right now. It's getting uh, to a point of it being refurbished. And so there's a bunch of, like, scaffoldings and, and stuff like that here. So... We have it where Stone is wanting to take out uh, Remo, and so he hires three construction guys to climb where Remo is and is trying one way or the other to use these uh, these ropes uh, that have this metal piece in the end to kind of uh, hit him with this or to try to figure out a way to have Remo uh, kind, of, kind of get taken off his balanced game here. So Remo at some points is to go on and uh, eventually be holding on to this one piece of uh, like this metal part and it keeps like going back and forth as like he's rocking back and forth with this thing, this kind of metal pull and then he ends up having to slide down it so Remo eventually is to figure out how to like climb his way from these enemies and is at some points having to go on and like jump to these like uh, these extravagant things uh, even at one point trying to go on and jump uh, to this one uh, uh, item that is to be kind of hanging above with these ropes and this one metal piece uh, as if it's to be like some kind of like you know how when uh, guys would go on and try to like clean windows on skyscrapers they would have those big uh massive like rope pulley systems and uh they would have this like these metal this metal piece 
that is to kind of have them just kind of be hanging on and, and so on and so like it's that kind of thing that Remo at some point is to jump to and when he jumps to this item we have these construction workers are to see something fall and plump and they're thinking like oh that must be Remo but instead it's just some it's some sack of something and Remo is to still be hanging on by this rope and so these guys are to think that he's dead when actually he's not. Remo is to figure out a way to rope his way uh, to get back to these guys and is jumping on top of this elevator that they're on. And then he is to figure out a, how to climb all the way around the elevator to get to where these guys are to start beating them up and, and knocking them down and knocking them unconscious and taking them all out. So... There's the whole explanation of the whole Statue of Liberty thing for the most point. Uh, I was very vague about it, but it's kind of like also very hard to explain all of that in technical terms. So, because really like how like, hey, there's this beam and, <laughs> and Remo is kind of like careening off of it, going back and forth, and then he slides down it. And, uh, like, there is to be these scaffoldings all over the place. And, like, I'm not quite sure if this is legitimately the real Statue of Liberty or not, or just some replica that they just made. Eh. So, and plus also, like, Remo is, like, all over the Statue of Liberty, just, like, jumping on, uh, jumping from the Statue of Liberty to this rope. It's some interesting things. So... Now we push on to the far part of the movie where after McCleary is to get captured by Grover or Grove and man, would that be an interesting uh, Sesame Street episode? <laughs> McCleary is captured by Grover. <laughs> Grove, I meant. So Grove is to be keeping McCleary alive via this machine and when McCleary is to wake up, having Grove uh, need to want to send out Stone uh, to torture McCleary for information, McCleary is to go on and figure out a way to cut off these certain items that are technically keeping him alive. And so McCleary is now dead, sadly. So, we, so we go on and we have where uh, Fleming is to go to this base and is to have a talk with Grove and uh, General Scott Watson and... We also have it where uh, Remo is to also be at this same base. And this, of course, is when <clears throat> General Scott Watson and Grove are accusing Fleming of being uh, in cahoots with Reming and this McCleary guy. And Fleming's like, no, like, I'm not, like, I'm not working with those people. I don't even know who they are. And so, but they're thinking otherwise. So when Fleming is to make it out of that room and is to see Remo right then and there, Fleming's like, hey, you just cost, like, you might have just cost me my job. And... And Remo, <coughs> excuse me, and Fleming doesn't really know who Remo is. And Remo is like, well, like, I'm, a, like, I work for the government. And she's like, oh, so, like, am, are you a higher rank than I am? Like, should I be saluting you? And he's like, yeah, you should be. So we have Williams and we have Fleming that are to go on into this vehicle uh, to eventually have a uh, 
a guy come in and tell them like, well, hey, like I have some information here that you'll go on and you'll find fairly valuable. So like come with me and like I'll get you some information. And so Reming and Fleming, uh, Remo and Fleming go with this guy to instead go into this uh, compression room that is to all of a sudden be releasing this gas. And so we have, of course, where Remo and Fleming are now like uh, they're losing air. And so we have Remo trying to figure out how to break this glass and he's having problems going on and figuring anything out. So we have it to where Stone is tempted to just try and beat Rem Remo to death within this room by putting on this gas mask. And so Remo is to go against this gas masked man, Stone, and is to eventually take off his gas mask and is to take this guy's t diamond tooth and is to scratch it against this glass and is to break the glass and is eventually able to rescue himself as well as, uh, as well, of course, as Fleming here. So we have one of the military men who goes off to speak with General Scott Watson and Grove and mentioned that there was an accident that happened in this compression room, which led to someone's death. And they're like, oh, who? Because... We have it to where Grove is thinking that both Fleming and now Remo is dead. And instead it's like, oh no, I'm sorry, sir. It's actually the stone guy. And they're like, ah, oh, like this guy, like we can't get rid of him. So Grove is to go on and is to try to figure out where Remo and Fleming are. And so what happens is, is that eventually... Remo and Fleming are walking into this forest and at some point we have Remo who is to hear this sound and so Remo is to go into the forest and find that Chun is there and Chun is like dude I've been like I've been stomping around this forest for I don't know how long and you just now figure out that I'm here so Chun, Remo, and Fleming are all to go into this car that these guys are trying to fix up, and they try to drive away. Come to find out the car doesn't have brakes, and so Remo is having to try to now figure out how these guys can get out of this car, and so they all decide to jump out of the car. Come to find out Chun's door like the 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 door the thing to use to the handle to open the door is broken and so Chun was still in the car by the time it landed and Remo's like well where the heck is Chun he's like oh my god he's probably still in the car so Remo goes where Chun is and is to realize that Chun is still in the wreckage and Remo's like, oh my god, Chun, you're, like, still, like, alive? Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> like, there is the one interesting banner that Reno, that Remo and Chun had with one another about, like, Chun's age, where Remo's like, how old are you? <laughs> and so Chun is like, well, like, uh, if anything, as far as the lifespan is, like, I'm... Uh, like I'm uh, not as uh, old as a mountain, but uh, there's other things where I'm, I'm much older than than and and so. But Chun is to say it's like well then I must be like the age that's just right. So, and Remo's like, but you didn't say what your age was. But also like Remo was curious, like with Chun about like uh sex and so chun is like well like you know what i have like a lesson 36 that is to be able to uh easily figure out how to uh like satisfy that 
And so Remo is to consistently joke about the whole 36 thing. It's like, hey, are we ever going to get to less than 36? So, so anyways, so when Remo and Chun are at this car that is just completely just in shambles, we have a one point where Chun is to call Remo like my son. And Remo's like, what did you call me? And he's like, you unbearable oaf and you, <laughs> you animal this, you animal that. And so Remo's like, you called me your son. <laughs> and then, so when Remo is to go off on his own to try to deal with Grove, he turns to Chun, he's like, little father. And then like Chun is like, ah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we also had the one soap opera moment about the one guy that was to be this, like, all-American. <laughs> and so the all-American guy, I guess, was to uh, have something wrong with him to where, like, the only way that he's going to be an all-American now is for his courage. Because uh, <laughs> he's going to lose something. So, uh and so Chun is to go on about these soap operas and how, like, they're the best thing ever. And Remo is like, you're watching this crap? And, like, Chun is getting Remo, like, updates about the soap opera. And Remo's like, why do I care? <laughs> it's just, like, you would have thought it would have been, like, a funny situation where Remo would have turned in just like Michael Keaton did in Mr. Mom, where all of a sudden... He is to start watching these soap operas and he starts to like them. Uh, like you would have thought it would just turn into that whole Michael Keaton, Mr. Mom thing. So anyways, back to story. So Remo is to go on and to eventually get tricked into these villains uh, to now be stuck to this tree, holding on to it for dear life, as it's dangling in the sky, as this kind of system is kind of pulling this tree uh, trunk to uh, this certain location, and all of a sudden Grove uh, is on this armored vehicle that is to have these guns on it, and Grove is all of a sudden shooting this tree, and not hitting one lick of uh, Remo. And so they continue to move this military vehicle and having Grove on it where he's trying to go on and uh, figure out a way to kill Remo and it's not working out. So we get to the point where Remo is to disconnect this tree trunk from this thing that is to kind of be this... Uh, this this system that is pulling this uh, this item along. And so the tree trunk ends up falling on this vehicle and that causes this vehicle to get into an accident and is to just kind of uh, eventually uh, have it where the only character that actually does survive is Grove. And so Grove is chasing after Remo and... Grove need, wants to figure out a way to kill Remo. And now we have it where Remo is basically now like as skilled technically as Chun. To where Grove keeps firing these bullets and Remo dodges them all. And we have the moment where Remo does the exact same thing as Chun and is to take the gun cartridge and take all the bullets out and eventually is to go on and hurt Grove to where it kills him off. And we then have it where, of course, uh, Remo and... Chun are to try to make it to this boat. So, and also Fleming. So, Fleming and Remo are on this boat and they're waiting for Chun 
And so come to find out Fleming is telling Remo, Remo that Chun was trying to look for Remo and that's why he's gone. And so Remo is trying to get this uh, boat together while these military guys are coming after them. And so Chun is to realize that he's going to have to run uh, run on the water to get to Remo to get on this boat so they can run off. And so we have this moment that looks very similar to Remo running on the sand and then not having like him having a footprint in the sand because he's just kind of floating in air. And we have Chon who's telling him like, hey, pick up your feet, be on the toes of your feet. As Remo was have to go on into the whole obstacle course thing that Chun was to set up, where Remo was to have to like balance on these certain items with one foot in his house and was to jump from item to item to item to then jump to this like upper part of uh, Chun's place. And so Chun is like, well, okay, like it seems that you went on and you finally conquered this. Now conquer this again, but with no lights on. And Remo's like, wait a minute, what? And so Remo's like, well, okay. And so he jumps to this item and he falls and he makes a pretty good bang. And it's like, well, yeah, like he's going to have to like reverse learn how to go on and do this like basically blindfolded so Remo and Chun are to run off in this boat and so the major is to just go off with these military men and so Remo and Chun are driving off as quickly as they can away from these guys and Chun is saying like hey we need to go on and, uh, like, we need to quickly get back home so I can watch my soaps. And, uh, and Chun needs to figure out if, uh, the guy in the soap opera is, uh, really, uh, ill. Or maybe the doctor just wanted to pay for another wing in this hospital. And so this doctor was lying to this guy all along. And Remo's like, really? Like, that's what you're really concerned about? And so, like, that's how the movie just kind of uh, finishes off. So, that case, I think I'm going to finish off so I can get out of here. Um, yeah, uh, paraphrasing heavily in this one. Not quite sure if I got all the details. But tried to do this the best way I could because there's just a lot of... Uh, goofy things going on with the villain parts and so it's like there's a lot of weird kooky videos and stuff like that that I didn't really get into but either way I'm going to say that I'm just gonna get out of here so I can get under uh, the hour of uh, talking about things so that said I think I'm just gonna get out of here go on and uh, either possibly uh, yeah I'm probably gonna end up just having to call it a day so anyways goodbye everybody bye everybody